Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, I'm going to talk about Sage 100C manufacturing scheduling. So within the Sage 100 manufacturing module, the work tickets can be scheduled. So let's take a look at our agenda. So we're gonna revisit templates. We talked about templates a few sessions ago. We're gonna revisit that a little bit. Talk about scheduling overview, how it works capable to promise how that works, and then the actual scheduling of work tickets. So here we are in Sage 100. And the first thing I wanna talk about is templates as it relates to scheduling. So let's go ahead and open up manufacturing. I'm gonna to go to the setup folder and pull up work ticket template maintenance. We'll do a look up here and you can see a list of the templates that we have defined and all of the steps involved. So let's just take this, uh, this one right here. So this is a template for a computerized desktop, custom desktop system. And notice that we have assigned to this template for this step, this is step 10, the activity code CFG or configure components. And when we look at the amount of hours that it's going to take to do this particular step, we've said that it's going to take four hours. So in terms of scheduling, when it schedules the work for any work ticket using this template, it's going to schedule four hours of work in this activity code. Now, when it comes to activity code, it's kind they're kind of used for two different purposes. One is from a from a labor standpoint, it can define what kind of work is being performed. But from a scheduling standpoint, we might call it a work center or where the work is being performed. So keep that in mind if you're setting up your activity codes and creating templates. Back to our agenda then, our scheduling overview. So as Work tickets are created with each of the steps. Each step has a assigned activity code. The activity code will in turn determine how many hours are scheduled into that activity. And the activity code will also control the calendar of what's available to be scheduled. So let's take a look at the activity code for config, CFG, that we just looked at. And we can go to that activity code, go to the scheduling tab, and you can see how many hours are available to be scheduled into this activity code or work center for each day of the week. You can see there's eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. We also have a calendar, and in the calendar, we can define what days of the week this particular work center is available, and we can enter in exceptions. For example, I'll type in the 25th here, and we'll change the number of hours that are available on that day, Christmas day, to zero, which means it's now closed. So when it does the scheduling, it'll schedule around the 25th. Now I want to talk about capable to promise. So one of the features in Sage 100 C manufacturing is during sales order entry, when the work ticket is being created, it can do a calculation of when the, the product can be produced, thus creating a capable to promise date. Let me show that to you. So we're gonna take a look at capable to promise by going into sales order entry, and we're gonna create a new work ticket. So I'll just use the next sales order number, pick my customer, use my work ticket class, custom make to order systems, and go to the lines. Go ahead and choose my custom desktop system. Say yes, we're gonna create a work ticket and let's do 10 of those. Now this is why I showed you the template because as it's gonna come in, it's gonna ask us if we wanna use the template. Let's go ahead and say yes, and that in turn will create the work ticket. Now I'm gonna say no, just for sake of argument here for just a moment to edit the work ticket. So we just have this work ticket. Now, if we go back to the line and we find our promise date field, which is down in the secondary grid by default,
if I can find it. Let's try that again. Oh, maybe it's up here. Oh, there it is. Sorry. So we have our promise date and standard Sage 100 pulls the lines promise date from the header of the sales order and the header of the sales order pulls its date from today's date. But when I'm in this field, I can push this calendar button and this will do a capable to promise. So I'm going to go ahead and push this button and it's going to set the promise date to 1220. So it's going to change the date from 126 to 1220 based on the template and the number of hours that are scheduled in each of those work centers or activity codes. So we can tell our customer ordering these 10 desktop systems, they should be completed by 1220. Now this does not schedule the work ticket. So let's do that. So back on our agenda, we're now going to talk about work ticket scheduling. So let's go ahead and look at scheduling this work ticket. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the work ticket. And you can access the work ticket from sales order entry or from work ticket edit. It really doesn't matter. And what you want to do to schedule the work ticket is to not have a step selected and go to step recap, which will show all of the steps. And we're just going to highlight one of the steps and say schedule. And when you do the scheduling, you can schedule a range of steps. And you can start at any of the steps that you want through the end that you want. And we'll go ahead and schedule that. So that does the scheduling for us. So let's take a look at our schedule then. So this, this step, step 10, which we looked at in our template in the CFG activity or work center is going to start on 12 seven. It's going to start tomorrow and we have 40 hours scheduled. So that's going to take us to next Thursday. So it's going to take eight hours on Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It is five days, 40 hours. So that's where the schedule. Now you can adjust your schedule as you go on by starting at a different step and you can start the schedule at a later date. You can tell it what date you want to start that that step or edit that schedule, those kinds of things as well. So that's how we schedule our work ticket. Let's take a look at another component of scheduling. And that is the scheduling hub. So I'm going to go to manufacturing and scheduling and the scheduling control hub. Now, the scheduling control hub allows you to look at your scheduled work tickets a number of different ways. It's going to default to today's date as the start date. It's going to go out by default as a week, and it's going to give us a graphical representation. And you can select individual work centers or activity codes here. You also can group your activity codes into groups and select the groups here. I won't. And I'm just going to say accept. And that's going to read my schedule. So now you can see for this CFG work center, we have that work ticket that we just created, 1744, scheduled. And these are the days that are scheduled into that work center. And these are color coded. So you'll notice that it's yellow with a green outline. And if we go to options down here, we can see the the coding. So light yellow means the work ticket is in danger of being late. Now, danger of being late means that the due date on the sales order line, the promise date on the sales order line is is within three days of the scheduled end date of the work ticket. And this makes sense. When we did the capable to promise, it said it's going to be due on, it's going to be done on the 20th. When we did the schedule, we said it's going to be done on the 20th. That's within three days of the promise date. So it's in danger of being late. Now you can move these and reschedule that way. So if I just drag that over, now it's a darker green, means it is going to be late. Notice it's black in the center now. So I can schedule it back. Now, this is somewhat silly because we only have one work ticket in on this particular date, but you can see that uh, how this could work for you if you had multiple work tickets. So I just want to talk for a little bit for a moment about the 
infinite scheduling or finite scheduling that's available in Sage 100C manufacturing. Infinite scheduling means as it schedules the work into these work centers, it ignores all other work tickets that may be scheduled in that work center. It just schedules that one. So it's in my example here, it schedules eight hours tomorrow and then eight hours on Monday. But there may already be other work tickets scheduled into that same work center tomorrow and Monday, et cetera. With infinite scheduling, it doesn't care. That's the way that it schedules it, which means you can go over capacity in a work center. So this scheduling hub also shows you capacity and will show you how many hours are available versus how many hours are being used. And you can look at that as hours scheduled or percent scheduled as well. So I'll do percent scheduled and you can see it's at 100% because we only have the eight hours available, we've scheduled eight hours. If it's over 100%, then what you can do is add, either add more capacity, which essentially means adding more people or running another shift or expanding the hours or something of that nature, or you can reschedule any of the work tickets that are in that work center. And that will help you move this capacity. So you can manage the capacity if you're doing infinite scheduling. But Sage 100C manufacturing also has the option of doing finite scheduling, which means it does look at other work tickets that are scheduled into that work center. So for example, if I were to schedule another work ticket using the same schedule as this one, and I said, when would it be done? If I was doing finite scheduling, it wouldn't start until the 21st of December because this work ticket has maximized all of the work centers until the 21st of December. And our capable to promise would show us that as well. So I just want you to be aware of what you can do with this hub. Again, the graphical is the default, but when you get into the percents and things like that, you can look at it day by day. So I can, I can look at this starting tomorrow, for example, and you can see we're 100% that day, and it can list, uh, if, I, if I look at the uh, detail, it can list the work tickets that are scheduled, things like that. So all I wanted to do today is give you a basic overview of Sage 100C manufacturing scheduling, let you know that it is available for you, and some nuances about doing the scheduling so that you can schedule the work appropriately into the work centers. Thank you for your time. If you are interested, obviously we have our YouTube channel for NIMS and Associates. We're in LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com and you can always contact us at erp at nimsassociates.com or call us at our main number 877-454-3200 extension 6346 and talk to Henry. Thank you very much for your time again.